So in this session, we'll learn the second way of generating a bunch of random numbers that adhere to a specified uh, distribution. It can be any distribution, normal distribution, but in this case, let's try out something new. So um, because of its simplicity, I've picked exponential distribution to give this illustration. So suppose we have uh, this situation where you might want to measure the how the, the busyness of a particular street because you are thinking of opening up a shop uh, to sell bubble tea or, for, or uh, some, some snacks. Um, in that case, we need to measure the interval between two consecutive um, uh, pedestrians passing by a particular shop front. So that's called the inter-arrival time. So um, when we do that measurement of time, that inter-arrival time between the pedestrians uh, and we plot it into a histogram, we'll see some sort of exponentially decaying curve. Maybe it's the blue, green or red, depending on the busyness of the traffic. And it is uh, in this sense that we use exponential distribution to model uh, the, the inter-arrival times of pedestrians. Example, right? Uh, or if you want to um, simulate and mimic the busyness of a particular um, service provider, such as the time it takes to to provide uh, hair salon service, uh, to cut the hair, to prepare milkshake, and so on and so forth, right? So all these preparation times, they tend to also, uh, when you plot it out as a histogram, follow exponential distribution. So now you are very excited. Okay, good. I like to use exponential distribution to simulate my ex uh, business operations or my potential startup, right? So I remember that you just need to find the inverse function and uh, supply it with the RAND formula, much like our exercise uh, in using normal distribution did, right? So we go to Excel and very excitedly, you like to generate the exponential inverse all right, of random numbers. So you try to say expo, oh yes, it has expon.dist and expondist. But there is no expon.inf. There is no inverse function that is already implemented in Excel. So what are you going to do? Well, you cannot redeclare your model as normal distribution because it is well understood that interrival times uh, do not quite follow normal distribution. So what should we do? Should we change the software? Should we wait for Excel uh, 2059 to come by before you run your business? No, right? Not really. So in such case, and there will be uh, quite frequently such cases where the desired software for simulation Maybe you are using Python, maybe you are using R, maybe you're using MATLAB, you know. The desired platform to do simulation, most likely you will have RAM because all systems, all the hardware will have RAM. But it may not have the inverse uh, CDF function for your desired simulation. So what are you going to do? Now, this is what we are trying to uh, learn here. Okay, and the, the, this second technique is what we're trying to do here. So the way we do it is that we begin with the known mathematical CDF function. So in this case, it is 1 minus e to the power of minus lambda x. So uh, if a random variable x follows exponential distribution, then what we need to do is we write... Um, x follows exponential distribution uh, with one parameter lambda. Okay, So unlike normal distribution, just one parameter will do. It's called lambda. Lambda represents uh, the average uh, number of customers per time, per minute, per hour, per 10 minutes, you know, so per time. So uh, the higher the lambda, the busier is the street traffic. The lower the lambda, the less busy. So something like that. But of course, exponential distribution is not just limited to uh, the busyness of street traffic, but just as an, a storyboard to think about how do I look at exponential distribution, right? So lambda is the measurement, the average uh, traffic 
uh, number of pedestrians per per minute per ten minutes, and x gives us the inter arrival time. So that's the the mathematics behind. What we're interested in is we begin with the CDF and then we find the inverse CDF uh, manually. All right. So so the idea is we know CDF and we like to find the inverse CDF like this. How do we find the inverse CDF? Mathematically, if CDF function is simple enough and we do have at least a uh, something quite that's quite decent 1 minus e to the minus lambda x right so we just find the inverse mathematically and that would do so the way we do it is let's find the cdf set it to equal to uh, the inverse function that we know okay and then we try to express x on the left hand side in terms of cdf which we call y so we call the CDF Y just to have a simple notation so that we don't have to write CDF or F X all the time. So set it to equal to Y. And uh, for simplicity, we change the lambda to a simple value like 30, but the 30 can be replaced with lambda and re lambda replaced with any value with this. So the general form is that when we set it to Y and then try to express or simplify so that when we take the lawn on both sides, x falls to the floor and on the left we divide it by minus 30 right so in this case we have a very simple expression the value of x is given by ln of 1 minus cdf divided by negative lambda all right so to put it in the text it will be uh, the generated simulation value is the ln of 1 minus uh, cdf value divided by negative lambda. The negative is important because it, it, uh, it is part of the CDF function, original CDF function. All right, so what does that bring us? If we keep this, the constant y there, then we're just doing statistics, and that's not what we're doing. So to simulate, uh, change y to rand, and then we are in, so, the simulated values will be ln of 1 minus rand divided by negative lambda. Okay, an example of which you see at the bottom here. So this strange looking feature uh, function is called the inverse CDF for the exponential distribution. Okay, so all exponential distributions, meaning all kinds of lambda, will have this form of inverse CDF. Now, Let's come back to our Excel screen. Since now we understand how to implement the formula for inverse CDF, we don't need Excel to give us any pre-programmed formula anymore. All we need to do is to say, <coughs> wait, we need to fix a, a lambda. So let's fix our lambda here. Let our lambda be 2.5, right? And before we begin, let's set some expectations. For exponential distributions, um, uh, the, uh, the inverse, the 1 over lambda, is going to be equal to 1 divided by I3, right? So that's 0 0.4. Now for uh, exponential distribution, the mean is going to be equal to 1 over lambda. The mean is going to be equal to 1 over lambda. The standard deviation is also going to be equal to 1 over lambda. Okay. So for exponential distribution, from statistics, we don't have to derive the results here, but from statistics textbooks, you can uh, find this. For exponential all exponential distributions, the mean, the population mean is equal to 1 over lambda. All right. <clears throat> the standard deviation is also equal to 1 over lambda. So it is a requirement, it is a, a behavior of exponential distribution. And we're going to use that to check whether we actually have a bunch of nonsensical values or is it actually making sense. In other words, we should expect the mean and SD 
of column H to be very, very close to 0 0.4. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 1 minus, uh, well, ln of 1 minus rand divided by negative lambda, which is dollar i, dollar 3. The reason why I put dollar is because uh, I'm going to copy and paste and I don't want the blue cell to shift. Okay, so we're going to generate <coughs> I don't want 1000, I want uh, 2000. Okay. More random numbers. Uh, it's not going to slow down the computer systems because as we, we see it is very efficiently generated. <clears throat> so we have 2001 here. Okay. All right. So, well, what are these numbers? Are they making sense at all? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so the mean of the average of column H. Aha, okay, the standard deviation of column H. There you go. So when we function 9 a few times and we see that all 2,000 random numbers, they look totally random, but they are behaving just like any exponential distribution behaves. See that? Okay, so all the mean SD, they are all very, very close to <clears throat> 1 over lambda. All right, so that concludes our uh, learning about how we can still carry out simulation despite not having assisted by built-in inverse CDF functions like norm.inf. Right, so if we have, we do not find any uh, expon.inf or <clears throat> uh, uniform.inf or something else, uh, then we can always re uh, resort to fiddling around with the CDF function and then finding the inverse explicitly. Okay. Now, this is um, very powerful because it allows us to uh, basically look up some statistical textbooks, look at, uh, or maybe even Wikipedia, to look at the CDF function and then derive the inverse CDF function. If you're lucky, maybe it has already been derived and you just implement that function, replace the CDF value, the probability value, with rand, you are in, you are, you are game in, right? You can generate millions of random numbers that adhere to the given uh, exponential or else any other distribution functions that you want. <clears throat>